Welcome you all to our Tuesday, November 13th school board meeting. This is our regular business meeting. Um, could we all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge the allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Welcome, everyone. Um, I would like to know, are there any adjustments to the agenda tonight? Okay. Um, seeing none, I'd like to um, approve, ask for approval of the school board minutes. Uh, could I have a motion, please? I can. I can't find it. <laughs> yes, I'll give you a motion, Mary. Okay. Uh, I move. Can we approve these all, all four of these as a slate? Yes, let's do Okay, I move that we approve the school board minutes from the meetings on Tuesday, October 9th, uh, Tuesday, October 23rd, and um, Tuesday, October 23rd. Okay, great. Um, any, uh, do I have a second? Okay. Uh, any discussion? Questions? Okay, all those in favor? Uh, we'll move on next to comments by student representatives. Do we have anyone here from the middle school? Great. Come on up and introduce yourselves. Are oh, they from the middle school? From the, they are the, from the middle school. Student. I think we have one student who's here to make the student government report. Yeah. Oh, yes. These are from student reps. We're looking forward to seeing the robotic team very soon. Thanks. Hi, my name is Connor Thorak, and I'm a rep for the middle school. Uh, we have one sport going on right now, uh, girls and boys basketball. Um, they both have a lot of numbers, and um, they have, both have expansion and the A team. Um, and this year, it's not through community services, the sign-ups. <clears throat> and then Thanksgiving break for us starts on the 21st, and we have no school Monday, or we have school Monday and Tuesday. And the whole eighth grade right now, or we just did, um, this thing called the Vital Signs in the Gulf of Maine Research uh, made this like website and uh, we pretty much like go out and like find different plants and um, we find all like the characteristics and everything about them and then we like publish them, publish them to the web and then like the experts come and like tell us if we did it right or wrong. And uh, the sixth grade band and chorus have a concert Wednesday, the 12th, and seventh and eighth grade have a concert the 13th. And uh, the next dance is on s the 7th of December. And I think from now till January, um, the whole eighth grade is going, like they p we pick a date and each one is going to the soup kitchen. And uh, we're helping out and for like just a while. And we're also doing stuff the bus. We get cans and like try to fill a whole bus full of cans and they also all go to towards the uh, soup kitchen. That's great. Thank you, Connor. All right, our um, comments from our high school representatives, Abby and Nolan. Hi. It's kind of awkward because we're sitting on opposite sides today. So just make my comments first. Okay. Um, <clears throat> well, we just had the end of the quarter last week, which was stressful for most high schoolers, but it's, you know, first quarter is under our belts now. We also had voting last Tuesday, so we didn't have school. Well, unless you were coming in to help out with either polling or running a table for an extracurricular. Um, the play opens this week. It opens on um, Thursday, I believe, How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying. I heard it's fabulous. I will be there opening night. And also we have the TEDx event coming up, um, which is very exciting, December 7th. Um, if you want more information about that, we have a Facebook page and a Twitter account. Um, and also, as some of you might have heard, our hallway decorating attempt went awry and uh, yes. the, 
the fire department was called after an incident with a smoke machine. Uh, we've been told that we can no longer have hallway decorating because it's a, it's a fire hazard, but we are, the Student Council is currently brainstorming ideas uh, for fun replacements. Um, so I'm sure we'll work that out, but um, it, yes, it is kind of humorous as we've lost very many fun privileges lately. Um, <laughs> the, uh, also, the, the boys cross country team recently uh, uh, competed in the New England Championships, so we're very proud of them. They uh, did extremely well. Um, as Abby said, um, on elections we had exit polling with Ted Jordan's AP government class. It was also a big day for extracurriculars, a lot of fundraiser, fundraisers. Um, no school that day. Uh, mock trial is entering the playoffs. We're very excited about that. I know the robotics team is another very successful club that always does extremely well within the state and even the national level. Um, winter sports are starting. And attendance at our last Cape Fusion event did drop off a bit. So we're, we're also going to kind of, it, it was really surprising considering the success of our first event. So we're kind of going to want to start brainstorming ideas to get attendance back up and get people excited about it again because I'm sure um, it's, it's a great idea and I'm sure we can get people to, to keep going because it's really a superb idea. Um, and also, um, well, I think that's pretty much it. Okay, great. Um, Nolan, can you remind people what Cape Fusion is? Oh, yes. Uh, Cape Fusion is an event that uh, it was actually kind of thought up by Aaron Filio, and it's kind of been coordinated by a lot of uh, a lot of people at the high school, and uh, it's basically a, a event that's held once a month on a Saturday night, um, where kids can basically go and uh, basically play games, dodgeball, uh, ha just have fun with their friends in kind of like a safe environment. Um, it's it was really it's really a good time. I mean. It, and it's a it's a great idea. There's just tons of games. There's food. There's things to do. Um, yeah. And it's for high, the high school. It's, it's Ken. For yeah, it's Ken. for the high school. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. And I'll just add with thanks to the Cape Elizabeth Educational Foundation for sponsoring the Fusion Project. Great. Great. Um, just one clarification, Abby. You mentioned the TEDx event and the fact that there's a Facebook page and a Twitter account. Do you know what those are? Um, well, the Facebook page, basically, you can just enter into the search bar, um, TEDxYouth at CEHS, mm -hmm. and that's the same thing with the Twitter. So, also, if any of you want to come to the mock trial quarterfinals, which I don't know why you wouldn't, it's <laughs> four, four or five hours on a Saturday. Yeah, Very fun. Um, it is a Saturday at 9 a.m. at some courthouse in Portland. I'm not sure which one, but one of them. Mm -hmm. You're not going to work. Great. Okay. Thank you, Nolan and Abby, for the update. Um, we will move on to comments from the public on agenda items. Does anyone have comments on agenda items? Okay. Seeing none, we'll move on to communications. Um, and I see that robotics is first, so we are going to, the board is going to move into the audience so we can watch the robotics presentation with the rest of the Mr. audience. Mr. Evan Thayer is going to get us started. Okay, great. Thank you, Mr. Thayer. Uh, I will just speak ever so briefly because these students from kindergarten, or there are no kindergarten students here tonight, but from the earliest of grades to the uh, seniors, it really is a continuum of experience and um, they will speak for themselves very shortly here. But I can say the very exciting thing for us this year was to move into uh, kindergarten to fourth grade with the, um, with the program that we have. And it's called the Lego Black Belt Program, where students build various models. They have these uh, kits um, and that the parents and families have purchased themselves. That's their investment in it. But they then have their at-home Lego or at-home engineering kit. And they build the models at home. Uh, they watch curriculum videos online and prepare for certification tests that are either conducted by me 
for some of our older robotic students as well. So these students are absolutely gaining uh, incredibly good skills. There are now 85 students in robotics kindergarten through 12, and at least another 15 on various waiting lists. That's 100 students. That's extremely significant. Um, it is a large effort to do this project well, uh, but we definitely want to communicate the successes that we're having. It's, uh, students start with a white belt and they earn stripes. I've given myself a yellow belt just to set myself uh, up a little bit so I can recognize my own kit. But other than that, I'll have the uh, students come up. I do have a handout for school board members which um, gives their name and what they'll be talking about, but just let them show you what they got. So guys I, and, and lady, I would have you uh, come up. Parents as well will be around so they can communicate what the project has meant to their children. So, oh, and so actually, I think what we en envisioned was for this 15 minutes that the um, school board members would actually come up and engage in smaller groups so that they wouldn't be presenting one at a time necessarily. But um, is that a, so it's more, yeah, perfect. Thank you. So let them uh, explain away to you what they're doing. But it runs all the way through.
like stuff. I think we're in our last. Whoop. get into the techno
Okay. Um, thank you, Evan. That was absolutely fascinating, and um, I was so impressed by the student talent I saw. Um, how many students, again, do you have in um, elementary school? In elementary school, there are um, 30 in the program, and I think 10 that just we just put on a waiting list. Mm, yeah. Well, it, it, the work they're doing is incredible. It, it's, it is. It I is. wish the public could have seen um, close-ups. It's a lot of fun to watch and to work okay. with them. And I would be remiss not to announce that on December 1st, the uh, Cape Elizabeth High School will be hosting the Southern Maine Vex Robotics Tournament. OK. And where will that be? In the high school cafeteria. At, all day Saturday. Too. All day Saturday. I, I'll bet you will. Are you going to publicize that? <laughs> I, I think that is ongoing. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of people would be interested in coming to this see This is that. part of the publicity right now. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and that's December 1st, <laughs> all day, in the high school cafeteria. Starting what time, Evan? Uh, 9 o'clock, I think, 9.15. Okay. I bet you'll have a lot of people interested in, in watching that. So. See you there. Yeah, thanks. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks. Um, Kathy Barber would like to say a few words thanks. as a parent about I, robotics. Yeah, and I just want to make sure, I want to give Evan the recognition for really standing by this program and developing it the way he has. Uh, Luke and Anthony started this back in 2004. So they've been involved with it eight years. And when you look at what this program in particular and how it relates to STEM education, it teaches them engineering, it teaches them programming, it teaches them math, it teaches them leadership, it teaches them sportsmanship. Mm -hmm. And I think it would be phenomenal if CAPE puts more resources towards this program so we can grow it and meet the demand that's out there and just create these STEM scientists that, <coughs> excuse me, Maine so desperately needs. So. Yeah. Um, I know I am a true believer of this, and I hope what you saw tonight will help convince you. And Evan, thank you for all you do for us. Thank you. Are there any board comments before we, um, before we release our, our team? OK. Thank you again for coming and for sharing um, your, your uh, creations and your passion with us. They, it, I'm so impressed um, not only by what you've created but also um, your ability to explain it and your, um, your presentation skills are superior um, for your age group and your confidence level and I, I learned a lot tonight. I'm not a machine person so I wish you the best of luck and um, we're here to support you, so um, good luck and keep it up. And maybe we'll see you on the December 1st in the high school cafeteria <laughs> <laughs> from 9 a.m. until the afternoon. All right, thank you. And if you, you guys need to go home and do your homework, feel free to go now. <laughs> or, or, or build more robots. Or build more robots for us, yes. Just wait for a moment while they leave. Um, next on the agenda, we have Roger Bishop, um, who, come on up, Roger. I'd like to say a few words um, about the high school AP government class and his experience yes, as a candidate. Um, as mentioned, my name is Roger Bishop. 
and I am a resident of Cape Elizabeth and live at Ten Lane Farm Road. Um, and I thank you for allowing me to say a few words tonight uh, to the board. As you may recall, uh, recently I ran for office for the main House of Representatives for District 2023, which is part of Cape and a little part of South Portland. Although I was unsuccessful uh, in uh, winning that seat, it's been a memorable and a personally rewarding endeavor. Um, over the nine months that I was campaigning, many very positive things happened. But uh, there's one that stands out in my mind more so than some of the others, and that's why I'm here tonight. So I'd like to comment on that uh, experience. Um, as you may, you are aware, but maybe the members of our community, uh, the candidate night uh, for Cape Elizabeth is um, hosted, uh, produced by the students of uh, the Cape Elizabeth High School AP government class. Um, uh, I was first introduced to Ted Jordan at a political event, and um, uh, who is the teacher of the class. Um, upon our introduction, he started immediately enrolling me to assist uh, in the political education of his students. Uh, I was impressed with his enthusiasm, his professionalism, that he wanted to bring into his classroom real life experiences so the students could um, have a different perspective and view of the process. Uh, it was hard to say no to Ted, and he got me very enthusiastic, so I ended up in his classroom. Um, and there I was able to participate in answering questions uh, from the students about the, the campaigning process and the political process. Uh, my opportunity to be in Ted Jordan's classroom was one of those unique experiences uh, to observe um, and be part of the Cape Elizabeth education process. I found the students to be informed and attentive. Clearly, Mr. Jordan provided the background for their engagement. And I want to commend Ted Jordan uh, for his professionalism and dedication to the uh, education of our children. So, also, I'd like to take a moment and comment on the students' participation in the um, Candidates' Night. Uh, they were, as I mentioned earlier, they were the moderators and they were the producers of that program. They were well prepared and demonstrated a grasp of the subject matter. Um, although they did an excellent job, the thing that you know, stands out in my most is their air of self-confidence. Um, as you know, being in front of a TV camera and being broadcast throughout the community is a bit intimidating at times. Um, their self-assurance, I think, is reflective of their uh, support mechanisms they receive at home as well as in their educational process. They're outstanding um, ambassadors for our community, and I thank them for a tremendous experience. Lastly. I'd like to uh, commend the school board uh, for allowing and supporting uh, student involvement in our democratic process. In this time of political skepticism and gridlock, it is so important we educate our children about the system that's the pillar of democracy. Thank you for allowing me to speak to you tonight and for your dedication to our community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Roger, and thank you also for um, putting yourself out there and running for office and, um, uh, you know, agreeing to public service. So it's been delightful to get to know you and, th and um, those of you who um, can't, uh, can't see out into the audience, Roger um, attended many of our meetings and stayed in touch, and um, we hope you will stay in touch and, with the schools. And, um, next is the superintendent's report. Thank you. So I think our student representatives covered some of the items on my list, including the Southern Maine Vex Robotics Tournament on December 1st at 9 a.m. Is that in uh, the cafeteria? <laughs> that will be at the high school in the cafeteria. 
Um, <laughs> but I did want to mention a few other things. Uh, since our last meeting, parent conferences were held across the district. Um, and again, that's a huge investment of time on, on the part of teachers and staff and parents and community members who make the time to sit down and have conversations about the progress of students and um, their success in school. And um, it really is a partnership. And we appreciate the support and time that people give on, on both sides of that. Uh, Decem December, Look, I've jumped ahead already. On October 16th, um, we held our community action planning forum to talk about um, the future of the school district to sort of begin the work um, of developing the action plan to support the mission and vision. And we also held a school conversation um, with school faculty on our teacher workshop day on November 6th. The first meeting of the committee, so a smaller organizing committee, again, a similar structure to how we worked with Mission and Vision, will be meeting next Monday, um, October 9th, November. I have no idea what month it is, apparently. <laughs> it all blurs together. Time goes by so quickly. But uh, next Monday, November 19th, after school. Um, and th there are several community members. Um, we had a number of people step forward, and we could only choose three. So we drew some names from a hat. Um, but those um, three people will join us, as well as some representatives from our schools. And um, interested board members should let Mary know. But I'm hoping that we'll have uh, at least a couple of board members participating in that work as well. Let's see, on October 23rd, we held our third day of teacher leader training. So our department heads and teacher leaders from across the district um, took a day out of the classroom to do some work around um, enhancing their skills and working with teams, as well as examining data. Uh, it's been a very productive set of workshops for our faculty members and our administrators. and. We look forward to continuing some of that work. It really enhances our work with professional learning communities and um, helps make sure that all, all of us have the skills that we need to be successful in that work. I had coffee chats um, this past Saturday and this morning and um, had the opportunity to meet with six um, community members over those two sessions, which is great. It's just a very informal opportunity to talk about what's happening in education and in our schools. And I really appreciate people making the time. I always learn a lot. Um, I think we've already heard about the upcoming fall show at the high school, and we heard about the middle school band and chorus concert dates. The high school band and chorus concert, I believe, is scheduled for November 29th. I'm pretty sure that's the right month. I have it this time. Um, at 7 o'clock at the high school. Uh, David Hillman, who's not here tonight, attended um, as the school board delegate to the Maine School Board Association Fall Conference in October. This Friday, a number of our student athletes will attend the Western Maine Conference Athlete Summit, which is an opportunity for them to um, develop their skills as student leaders and as athletes and think about um, their role in their teams and how their teams work together and um, also think about their future um, as athletes and as students. And thank you to Mr. Thorex for coordinating um, the athletes to attend that. And finally, on December 11th at 7, the night of our next board meeting, um, the Middle School Parents Association will be hosting a premiere screening of a film about Chiwanki, um, which features some of our middle school students. The f um, series was taped by pub um, public television last year while our students were attending camp. So that special screening will be December 11th at 7. So if you're not coming to the board meeting, and you'd like something else to do that evening, that's an option. And I think that is it. Do we know anything else about the PBS um, clip or the, the special on, on Ch Chiwanki? Uh, in terms of when it will air on I PBS? don't have airing dates for PBS. I only have the invite date. But once we have those available, we'll definitely circulate that. I was just looking at the notice. I do know that Sam Waterston gave some of the narration, which is exciting. Uh, and can we post that? That's on all I know. The school website when that comes up. We certainly can. That would yes. be great. And and the clip. And I'm sure the middle school will be, yes, publicizing it as well. But great. yeah, we do have a, a short trailer from the film that we can share. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Merida. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll move on to new business now. Um, item A is consideration to approve the collective <coughs> bargaining agreement for the Cape Elizabeth Education Association, bus drivers, custodians, food service, and maintenance mechanic. 
Do I have a motion, please? I move that we approve the collective bargaining agreement for the Cape Elizabeth Education Association bus drivers, custodians, food service, and maintenance mechanics. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. okay. Um, Michael, can you fill us in on that a little? A absolutely. Um, uh, the, uh, the, the basis of the negotiation was there were two uh, separate collective bargaining agreement, uh, 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 units. Historically, there was food service, and then there's another unit, bus drivers, custodians, and maintenance mechanics. And there was a proposal to uh, combine those two units. So um, it was a uh, very uh, productive and um, uh, d uh, negotiation. I would particularly like to thank uh, Meredith and Linda Alfiero for helping us navigate through the complexities of, of merging together two uh, separate agreements. Um, uh, as always, uh, as the school board representatives, John Christie and myself, uh, have been uh, pursued what we hope is a, a good framework for other negotiations where our goals are twofold. One is to attract and retain uh, the professional staff uh, we currently enjoy in the school system, and two, uh, negotiating agreements that reflect uh, the current economic climate and, uh, to the extent possible, market uh, market rate. So, um, you know, it was. Uh, a lengthy but fruitful discussion. We were happy to be able to to, to merge the two units, and um, you know I imagine when the agreement's finalized, or I believe it's finalized, uh, in, in terms of specific details, uh, you're you're more than welcome to look through those on the on the website. I don't uh, feel like I need to uh, you know highlight any of those, but it's a similar format to, to our other units. And if anyone has any questions, they can. Uh, can contact uh, myself or Meredith on any uh, particular questions. Okay, any, any questions, burning questions? Just thank you, Michael and John, for yes, working yes. on that. Appreciate that. That was a lengthy, and Meredith as well, that was a lengthy procedure, and we appreciate it, you know, as the, the um, units were merging, I know that took some time and energy and patience, and. Um, Thank you both, and you too, Meredith, for taking the time to do that and do such a good job. And, uh, sort of, uh, uh, Pauline, obviously, we need to thank as yes. well, given uh, Always. she is our uh, resident historian on, uh, you know, the history of a lot of these, um, you know, agreements and background and context. And one thing we have learned, you know, obviously, um, you know, many employees have been here many years, and, uh, you know, it's important we, to, you know, have an open discussion and, and get an understanding of, of their perspective. Uh, so we, we learned a lot and uh, feel like both sides uh, were, uh, you know, uh, happy with, with the result and um, I'll leave it at that. Yeah, I would just thank the other members of the bargaining team for the Teachers Association. So in addition to Linda Alfiero, we were joined by Bob McBain, Dick Munson, uh, Regina Wilson, and Denise Ordonez. So our thanks to them, too, for putting in a lot of time and working through this process. Thank you. All right, so um, all those in favor? Right, we'll move on to item B, consideration to approve the following athletic staff nominations. I think we can do these as a slate. We have middle school um, and high school. Uh, just to give a, uh, an idea, we're looking at basketball, track, swimming, um, hockey, hockey Ski. skiing, Nordic ski, um, and alpine. Um, those are the teams that we're looking at, and these nominations are, will be listed in our packet for anyone who was interested in seeing those. So do I have a nomination to approve the slate, please? I move we approve um, the <coughs> staff nominations listed in tonight's packet in 6B with the addition of Patrice Leary for the middle school Nordic team coach. Do I have a second? Eight. Okay, any questions or comments? I have one uh, quick comment. Um, 
Are we still still looking for a head coach for the Nordic ski team? Because I believe we just have an assistant there. Um, I know that the team has had is having some trouble. They still don't have a head coach. No, that's um, possible. I know. And the uh, season is approaching. Um, as I, I guess, as a member of my te of that team, I guess uh, uh, that be that seems to be an, an area of concern because it's going to be extremely difficult to coordinate things like the like travel to meets and, and things like that without a, a head coach. Because um, I do know that Devin Morrill has a he has another job that he's committed to and he can't be there for all the time. So. Um, that might be an area to look at. Um, yes. uh, thank you, Nolan, for pointing that out. And I will say, uh, I know Mr. Thorak has been working on that. Um, and I will say that it's a challenge sometimes to find coaches. Um, the athletic season, as you point out, has some pretty lengthy commitments sometimes. And people who work outside of education um, struggle sometimes to be able to work around that schedule. Uh, we certainly have a large number of teachers um, and um, our educational technicians and substitutes who help us out by um, filling in as coaches, but it is an enormous task to fill those. So if you are watching now and you have a background in Nordic ski, <laughs> I know that uh, Mr. Thorek would, would welcome um, inquiries through the athletic office at the high school. Thanks for pointing that out, no. okay. Any other comments, questions, concerns? Okay, all those in favor? All right, we'll move on to item C, um, consideration of the following policies for second reading. Uh, John, do you want to make yes. a motion? Yes. Um, so, uh, I'm going to move. I, I would like to move to approve these policies um, as listed in our packet with a, a couple of changes. I think I want to hold um, IJJ, which is Educational Materials. I think you have Meredith. No, I was just going to point out Sorry. that IJJ was recommended with was reviewed with no changes recommended. So even though the version that's in the packet has an error in it, the version in the current policy manual is correct. I verified that online. Okay. So, so we reviewed it. We didn't recommend any changes. I understand. I, right, I understand that. But, I, but I, the board members haven't, don't have that version in, in their, their current in their current packet. Correct. So unless there's a burning need to have this policy in place this time around, I would. That's fine. Okay. So, and the other. The other change, and then maybe I'll have to go back and try my motion again, is that I'm sorry. that's right. Um, I B I sorry I I H B A A, which is the referral pre referral policy, is actually also recommended for deletion. Correct. So, and it's listed among those that are for second reading. So we're recommending that policy be deleted. I just, that's clear in the notes. Yes. If you look at the policy that's in the packet, that's clear, but it's, yeah. it's not clear in the agenda. So I just wanted to point that out. So um, David Hillman's not here, so I can make this very long motion I'm without, <laughs> probably without any objection. <laughs> um, you know, he'll, he'll, I'm sure he'll watch the video and harass me for having said that. Um, so I would move that we make we approve these policies as spelled out in our packet with the two changes that I, IHBAA be recommended for deletion and that IJJ be held for the next board meeting. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. All right. Any questions about John's motion or um, any of the policies? I read through them and I understood. Um, and thank you for the work and. Um, it's always nice to read the policies, and I know, but I know it takes a huge amount of time to get them right. So, um, thank you for doing that work. Okay. Um, all those in favor? We'll move on to item D: um, consideration to approve the following policies for first reading. 
No motion is required, but John, is there anything that you want to say about these policies or tell us? Um, no, but we, no, I don't think I have anything specific to add about these policies, except that um, the policy committee continues to move diligently through the, through the policy manual, particularly the, um, those, repo those policies required by law, um, and, or policies that require our more immediate attention, uh, and these are the next on the list. Um, and so I would encourage board members to become familiar with these policies and um, if there are any changes, some, some members of the board have suggested, have read these policies knowing that they were coming up for first read and have suggested changes. So we're always um, eager to hear any input you have. Okay, thank you, John, and thanks for all your work. Um, I, the, uh, the report titled Facility Use Study Committee Report, did, did, is that in my, oh, I didn't know if that was part of the. Oh, it's informational only, okay. um, and it is not um, last spring. Um, the facilities committee, which included representatives from community services, maintenance and facilities, um, town council representation because of the fee structure. Um, I was there for some of the meetings and uh, members of the community services advisory commission uh, met to review our facility use guidelines. Um, this information is provided to the board for okay. informational purposes, but the final decision on the fee structure rests with the council. Thank you. All right. So we'll move on to item C. Um, oh, if I can backtrack for just one moment. In terms of policies, John, you guys have been diligently plowing through the policy manual. How much more do you have? <laughs> <laughs> You've reviewed Let's see if I brought that. Such. I don't have that. I don't. I, I will say that we have. Um, nearly completed our review of the required policies. The slate that you have, other than a couple that were held out um, to look at um, a couple of specific details, uh -huh. you, you have seen the slate of required policies. However, our manual is still um, rather large, and it is the recommendation of the policy consultant that we start back at the beginning and work through each section of our policy manual to determine if there are other policies that perhaps are out of date or obsolete or redundant um, with some other practices or that, um, frankly, just need to be updated or deleted so that we can um, slim down the size of our manual. So mm -hmm. we'll be starting that work at our December meeting. But we will have reviewed everything that is required by law, so we'll have more leeway in terms of, of deleting policies uh, that are That's unnecessary correct. or That's redundant. right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay. That's what I was, in the, the document I was looking for, the one you have in front of you. Yeah, okay. Um, which will give you a sense of um, what we still have to do. Um, it's... So having moved most of the way through the, the required policies, there's still a lot more <laughs> to review. Yeah, yeah. And so I don't expect that by the end of the, the term of this board that we will be, you know, anywhere near the, no. which is coming up after all in a month, mm -hmm. that we'll be anywhere near the completion of that process. Um, but that wasn't our goal either. No, our goal was to start it. Was it was to start it. <laughs> <laughs> which we can easily say we've done. Okay, thank you so much for all the work on that. Um, John, I appreciate that as chair of that committee. And thank you, um, Elizabeth and Joe, who served on that committee as well. All right, so we will move on to item number E, consideration to appoint an interim middle school principal. Um, Meredith, I think. <laughs> yes, you make the nomination right. so we can make the motion. Okay. Uh, well, as uh, people may be aware, we received Mr. Connolly's resignation about a month ago. Uh, we posted for an interim middle school principal committee um, of faculty members from the middle school uh, met with me to review applications. We received somewhere around 20 applications for the position. We selected candidates to interview and completed our interview process last week. 
and the committee is unanimously, unanimously recommended to me um, the appointment of Mr. Doug Purley, our um, current middle school assistant principal, um, to take the role of interim principal for the balance of this school year. Um, uh, Mr. Purley is a very thoughtful educator with many years of experience at the middle school level. Um, he served as a middle school assistant principal in the Kennebunk schools for a number of years. He served as a principal at a special education school in Massachusetts for a period of time and as an assistant principal um, in New Hampshire before he came to us um, this, this summer. Do I have a motion? I move we appoint Douglas Purley as interim middle school principal. Second. All right. All those in favor? Okay. Are we going to oh, have discussion? Discuss I'm sorry. I'm looking at, at Abby, who's <laughs> getting, who just gave me the. Can we hold on just a second? You need to leave? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay, great. Sorry, I have to leave. Pick up my dad at the airport and just landed from India. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Abby is very aware of where the camera is. I appreciate that about her. Good camera presence. <laughs> All right. Um, discussion. I'm sorry. Um, Meredith, I was hoping you could talk to us a little bit about um, your plans for the, um, sure. the assistant principal position mm -hmm. if the assistant, current assistant is elevated to the principal's position. Excellent question, um, and I'm sure lots of other people are wondering about that as well. Um, we, the committee made its decision last week um, and made its recommendation. Given the timing, um, I discussed um, with Mr. Purley and then um, sent a note to the middle school faculty last Friday asking that we come together the Monday following the Thanksgiving break. Um, to talk about options, and certainly there are, you know, some options for different ways to go. Um, you know, I think we, we saw the pool of 20 applicants is unlikely to grow substantially larger um, at this period of time, so I think, uh, I think that's a conversation we need to have with the faculty. Um, you know, there's, there's certainly the option of moving forward with filling that position. I think there are also some options for not filling it and um, making do in, in the short term. So that's a conversation that we'll have with the middle school faculty on November 26th, Then I will um, report back to you um, following that meeting on that plan next steps. And what, what, would be, um, what would be the start date? for the interim principal? M Mr. Purley will assume that role on November 26. Mr. Okay. Connolly's scheduled last day with us is the 20th of November, the um, Tuesday before Thanksgiving, and Mr. Purley would assume the role of interim principal beginning the Monday following Thanksgiving. So there would be no gap um, in continuity, and um, we'll be putting, um, pending the outcome of this vote, obviously, but we'll put a notice out to um, parents at the middle school um, tomorrow just to let them know what the transition plans are um, and, and certainly inviting them to contact me if they have questions or concerns in the interim. Meredith, did, um, Doug wrote a nice letter, a cover letter in, with this application. He, he, um, he wasn't asked to take this position. He volunteered and it's something that he um, knew uh, would be helpful to the students and, and staff yeah. of the middle school. Yeah. Um, and then I read in, uh, I read that he's, um, well, it was a nice letter and I appreciated his, um, his exp explaining it. I just um, wanted to say thank you to him for stepping up. I know he's taken on a new job with us and then to take on a, a second new job in the middle of the school year or the, during the flow of the year. And thank you for years. pointing that out. Um, when we you know, became aware of Mr. Connolly's resignation and his opportunity to become a superintendent about a month ago, um, I met with the faculty. You know, um, th there was no one in-house who was an automatic appointment. Um, we made a decision to open the process to look at the applicant field. Um, Mr. Purley made a decision ultimately to apply and um, yeah, certainly to his credit was a um, was the strongest applicant for the position um, in in our opinion. So, thank you. Thank 
you can get anything else in here? Okay. Do I have a motion? You have a motion. Okay, I'm sorry. I got so <laughs> distracted. <laughs> I Abby having to leave. All right, all those in favor, please. Five minutes. Five out. All right, let's move on to committee reports. Are there any committee reports? Okay. Um, let's see, school board agenda requests for the next meeting. Anyone? Anyone out there? No. Um, Announcements of upcoming meetings. John, when is your next policy meeting? I never have this date in front of me. It, it's first Monday. It's December 10th. Isn't it? Is that right? The, no, I believe it's first. I believe it's the third. The third? December 3rd. December. At 7.30 a.m. Okay. All right. And then we will have a meeting with our new legislators on November 28th. Mm -hmm. at 9 a.m. in the Jordan Conference Room? Correct. Anything else? No? All right. <clears throat> Michael is waiting Michael? to weigh in on, yeah, on the, um, I guess, if, uh, could we have it recirculated? I know at one point we were discussing workshop schedules and, yes. um, you know, m maybe, you know, uh, we could recirculate that and there might be some items we've addressed. Um, just because I know if we add one, um, you know, there may be preparation requirements or if there's items on there that aren't of relevant, I wouldn't want the, the DLT and working on something and, you know, it, it's not as pressing. So I don't know, maybe we could recirculate it and then the next meeting, you know, up, update it. I don't know if we've done that historically, just so we, we uh, realize or mindful of the time it takes in some of these okay. workshops. I will say that the November workshop is scheduled to be about literacy and some of the work that's been going on this year to update you on the progress um, in that area. So, but we certainly can send that out. All right, that makes sense. And then we'll, we'll put that on the December agenda then um, to a review of that and agreement. All right. All right. So um, I don't see any other meetings, so do I have a motion to adjourn, please? I move that we adjourn. Okay. Second? Second. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Great. Okay. Okay. At 8.05. Thank you.